Bickley, you're on an interesting committee. You're on the Environment and Public Works Committee. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to have a new chairman, James Inhofe. Yes. Okay. Uh, you and he uh, differ slightly on uh, global warming. Yes. He's got some interesting ideas. He uh, <laughs> believes it is not happening <clears throat> and that it is a hoax. Okay. Well, if you Where's ask, the middle ground for the two well, of you? If you ask, <laughs> are you going to well, come over to his side? Are you going to compromise on that one I, and just, I, just say it's not happening? And I'm sure he'll agree no, with you. I, the first time Oklahoma Senator James Inhofe chaired the Senate's Committee on Environment and Public Works from 2003 to 2007, he and his staff would post on the official Senate committee page the kinds of things you'd expect to see on Drudge about the liberal global warming hoax. Articles headline, quote, climate fears reduced to children's games and, quote, UK officially admits global warming has stopped, exclamation point. In fact, the in staffer who wrote many of those posts actually went on to work at a mini drug for climate denialists, climatedepot.com. If you head over there today, you'll see a champagne toast with a headline, cheers, warmest in a funk, followed by the New Republic headline, quote, congratulations, voters, you just made this climate denier the most powerful senator on the environment. Inhofe called Climate Depot a place for, quote, one-stop shopping of the best headlines of the day. And now it appears he will once again be running the most powerful environmental committee in the Senate. My point is God's still up there. And this is the arrogance of people who think that we, human beings, would be able to change what he is doing in the climate is, to me, outrageous. Science is now showing that there's not a relationship between man-made gases or CO2 and climate change. When you look back in history, you, uh, you look at these cycles and you have to come to the conclusion that God is still up there. No one has seriously demonstrated any scientific proof that increased global temperatures would lead to the catastrophic predictions by alarmists. you got to understand, we have people with their lives tied up in, 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 in trying to make this hoax a reality. In fact, it appears just the opposite is true, that increases in global temperatures have a beneficial effect on how we live our lives. Hmm. Ian Hoff has made climate change nihilism his number one cause. He's even compared the EPA to the Gestapo. In 2012, he authored a book called, quote, the Greatest Hoax, How the Global Warning Conspiracy Threatens Your Future. The senator from Oklahoma is perhaps the most committed denialist in the Senate, but in his new role, he will have the entire weight of the fossil fuels industry, Republican Party, and conservative movement behind him, a movement that has already made stopping the EPA regulation of coal-fired power plants and getting the Keystone XL pipeline built its top priorities. So, James Inhofe may seem like an eccentric uncle you can politely nod at and change topics on at a family dinner, but he's about to try to destroy what little we're doing right to avoid climate catastrophe. Joining me now, Charlie Pierce, writer at large for Esquire magazine and political blogger for Esquire.com and a longtime Inhofe chronicler. Charlie, your reaction to uh, the, the once and future king, James Inhofe, reclaiming the gavel in that committee? Well, I don't know that it's a gavel so much as a whoopee cushion at this point. <laughs> uh, but as you said, Chris, this is now the position of the Republican Party. It, it is now an untenable position in the Republican Party to be, to accept the fact of anthropogenic cl uh, climate change. You can't do it. In fact, to me, on Tuesday night, when it comes to issues and leaving the minimum wage referenda aside, the big winner was unquestionably voter suppression. Scott Walker got elected. John Houston got reelected Secretary of State in Ohio over, over, over Nina Taylor, who ran specifically on that. And uh, Chris Kobach got reelected in Kansas. The big loser among the issues was climate change. Yeah, and 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 the thing that I find frightening about Inhofe in that in that committee chairmanship is that they are they actually have their the the the, the entire sort of fossil fuels industry and the right and, and conservatives actually had their sights set on two real concrete targets. I mean, they want the Keystone Pipeline built. They're already talking about that as the first big bipartisan compromise. And they want to go after these EPA regulations, and they are going to have the ability to do that through appropriations bills with Inhofe there, who seems like a ridiculous character, but who is kind of going to be the, the, the point, the tip of the spear for this whole assault. Yeah, uh, there's, and they're going to get help, too. Uh, I, I read in The Hill uh, maybe yesterday that uh, McConnell is wooing Angus King and Joe Manchin. Uh, uh, and you gar I guarantee you the way he's wooing them is to be nice to the coal companies. Manchin came on TV just about when Alison Lundgren Grimes was declaring her campaign over to say the president had, had pretty much demolished her campaign because of these EPA, EPA regulations. Manchin is a lot of things, but he's not a reliable vote on the issue of climate change. And he's a Democrat. 
So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that this is, I mean, I think there's an enormous amount of power. And as ha much as I hate to say it, and as happy as I was to see Congressman Lee Terry out in Nebraska, who's probably the pipeline's best friend, uh, lose his uh, seat in Congress uh, to a Democrat, uh, this, uh, I'm starting to hear too much about this being the easiest bargaining chip. The, the Keystone XL pipeline. Right. But yeah. I mean, it's a fe the Keystone XL pop pipeline is a fetish object on the right now. It really is. Mitt Romney said that he would build it with his bare hands in 2012. And I would buy a ticket to that, Chris. <laughs> The other thing that's interesting about Inhofe to me is he's actually in a, in a weird way sort of out of step with the, the kind of frontline avant-garde of climate change denialism, which is the new Republican spiel of saying, I'm not a scientist. So the, the sort of the, the slightly less cringe-inducing, slightly hipper, slightly less ridiculous-seeming way of holding James Inhofe's views in politics, if you're Marco Rubio, if you're Rick Scott, is basically say, I'm not a scientist. And he's at least forthright enough to claim that the whole thing is a massive global conspiracy foisted on uh, uh, the American people. Yeah, he, you know, as I, I mean, I, 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 I told some people the other night that what this election was basically was the Republican Party taking the Tea Party of finishing school, and Tuesday night, Tuesday night was a debutante fall. Uh, yeah, he, he, they haven't gotten Imhoff yet. Imhoff is, <laughs> Imhoff is still the wild child on this. God will protect us, even if this, even if this is happening. God will protect us, but don't worry because it's not really happening. That's the other thing about the Inhofe line, which is, which is uh, the thing you see coming from conservatives is it's, it's like arguing the alternative in law school, right? I mean, they will say uh, the planet's not warming. If it's warming, it's, it, the planet's not warming. It is warming, but it's not man-made. If it is warming and it is man-made, it will all be butter off anyway, and we can't do anything about it. Right, and God will protect us. That's the, that's the one step Imhoff takes that a lot of them don't. God's still up there, Charlie Pierce. God is still up there. Nice, uh, nice uh, Gadsden flag lapel pin there. We're taking it back, Chris. What can I tell you? Charlie Pierce beginning the Don't Tread on Me reappropriation for liberals here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. All right.